All right, so let's build the cat door. What do you call it? Huh? Cat door? Yeah, like in the, the, in the door that uh -huh. they got. Yeah, uh -huh. cat door. All right. So let's delete yeah. all that things, you know, those things. The cat can go in and out of your cat box. So let's make something primitive here. You're going to blow away all those, all those cubes. OK, let's make the door itself. Yeah, just for visualization, this <laughs> these things won't be dynamic. So that's it. We have our door, <coughs> and we make it active. Now we go and connect it to gravity in dynamic relationships. Let's call it door. It's good to name things. I mean, I don't. I just keep on naming because uh, it, we don't have too many things applied. But it's good to name. Let's make a name it. The door. Oh, cat door. All right. So these guys you haven't done a lot of modeling, so you have to give them a little bit of time. To uh huh. You just need the uh, one. Okay, it works. And then we go and apply a uh, hinge. Let's see what is that. that hinge. Let's move it up a little. So right here where it's supposed to be. And now let's push the door. Mm. Just make, uh, make that cube passive. Pass the rigid body, and then we apply key animation keys on it. So right here, oh, let's first animate and then make it passive. Okay, let's make a cube to push that door. Let's set the keyframes on it. Okay, first frame, and then I click here on the automatic key, and then I go to frame. Uh, Half a second, frame uh, 14. Move it a little. So, auto key is the little key. I haven't really had to use that. So, you could just hit S. You key, uh, once you set a key, the auto key will automatically uh, apply keys whenever you move, uh, whenever you move the, uh, uh, your object, right? All right. And now, when we, after we animated this thing, we can make it into. That's a rigid body. <laughs> and then to make it stop, you see how it's revolving and too much force. Let's stop, let's make a stopper for this door. And uh, yeah, that would be it. And make this thing on top, this cube, uh, another passive body. And that will stop the door from revolving. Let's give it some more mass so it doesn't flip for too long. Uh, Ten. 
with bonus in this. The top? What do you mean? My door is just getting. Uh, so, just I, um, select four, so you can go, you can see through. Click four. No, click four. Uh, right on the on the keyboard. Click four. All right. Now run. Let me see. Oh, well, uh, so did you do it? I think now this this yeah this one select the top top cube, make it passive, don't make it uh, no instead uh, on the channel editor on the right the layer editor, channel box, scroll down, you see active is on, select that field click zero, zero, yeah that's it, now run, here we go. If you have trouble with the uh, inter interpenetrations and the uh, vertices go through, the, the easiest way to fix it, you go down and you see stand in, that's I, I, I pass on. Instead of known, you put it in cube. So what it does, it says, no matter how complicated, for example, if I have a cone or whatever, no matter, how, no matter how many vertices I have, it will stand in the cube. It, it will, my will calculate it as a cube that hits another cube, which will make the other body also stand <coughs> in cube. Because if none, it will go per vertice, and then uh, the, the uh, simulation will be calculated per vertices, and that, that will take longer time. But if you, this is saves time, this is just uh, calculation time. So it's either sphere, uh, cube, or known. So if you have a sphere, it's better to put in a sphere, something round, something you know, something that has radius, then you put it in a sphere. But if you have a simple thing like a couple of cubes, that's perfect. To so just put it in a cube. All right, so let's go back to Wrecking Ball. First of all, let's make sure that we don't overload the system and we go and select the cubes and the ball. Uh, no without the ball. Select the cubes, stand in, cube. It will calculate faster. Now we select the ball, stand in, sphere. Because it's a ball, it's a sphere. Now we go and apply a nail constraint to the sphere. And then select it move it towards the wall a bit and now let's disable all the velocity names when you uh, after a while when you build this in after a while you have so many objects and and then you you know you'll go just box 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 it's kind of box number two it's kind of hard to go through so yes naming convention is obviously a good thing so when we select that, we select that ball. We, we remember we didn't have gravity applied to it, so we're going back to uh, relationship editors and we click on dynamic relationships. Now where's my window? So window, okay. window relationship editor, dynamic relationship editor. Yeah, and then we connect our ball that we select now to the gravity to the gravity field field. Select the sphere or the wrecking yeah. ball, you call it wrecking ball, and then select gravity field. Alright. Yeah. <laughs> I have two. You have two? I have five. You have five? <laughs> so delete all your fields. And then select just keep keep one or more. Or hundred. Or thousand. And then you can play blast, and then you will see. You will see it. Let's let's play it. Let's play blast. Let's give it a mass of fifty, for example. And then I, I, again, for ba for faster simulations, put the ball in stand in sphere, and all your cubes stand in in cube. Check it out. Just uh, be sure. 
it will it will speed up your simulation. So guys, if you want to see it in real time, let's go and play blast. That's the way to test it because you never while it simulates you can you can you can't really see the real speed. So we go in the go scale.